Hi, sorry everybody, welcome to the decks where we cover trivia and strategy for a different Pokemon each week. I'm Pokekels and what what are you doing out? Uh oh, just thinking. Did you know that during the development of Gen 2, the Pokemon company asked for there to be a Pokemon for every letter of the alphabet? Oh yeah, that's basically why Zatu was created in the first place. Well, yeah, at least according to Jeff Callis from the Gold and Silver localization team, but to say that that's all he is, especially now that Xerneas exists, is really selling Zatu short. Great, and honestly, I look forward to really getting into it, but first, let's take a look at his stats. Stats? Yeah, right? I feel like we never really acknowledged the stats very much. Mm. Yeah, right after this, there's gonna be stats. Stats and a cry. Zatu is much more than just that X-Bird from Gen 2 dudes. In fact, it's so much more that I'm gonna completely skip the intro and move straight to the segment. Straight to the segment? But what about all the background info? His name origins, my perfect jokes! Relax, Dane Cook, it's all still in there. It just ties together so well that I'm just gonna make it all one big giant segment. Dane Cook, really? Oh, shut up, you hipster. I never. Ladies and gents, the decks proudly presents the Zatu Coastal Journey. Hit it, Jimmy. Zatu may be an oddly colored bird who has trouble expressing emotions well, but its origins will take us all along the entire west coast of the Americas, starting in the Pacific Northwest with a tribe of its indigenous people known as the Haida. There we find the Zat, which is basically the Haidan word for totem pole. Zat were intricately carved and were used as monuments to depict everything from legends to family histories, and each symbol on the pole has a specific meaning. For the most part, these totems were depicted as animals and the location on the pole was important. The top figure usually signified tribal lineage or clan, and in the case of Zatu, if its body is a totem pole, the top figure is obviously a bird, because, like, you know, he's a bird. Birds are some of the most commonly depicted figures on totem poles, and many different kinds appear, from ravens and eagles to more mystical stuff like the thunderbird or the horn-headed colus. Zatu in particular resembles the Modzex, which kind of looks like an eagle with a short, turned-down beak and with wings wrapped up just like Zatu's. This might also explain why Zatu seems to have another face on his chest, too. Maybe it's the next head on the totem pole? Is that creepy? Sure, but that still doesn't explain Zatu's round features and crazy colors. For that, we have to look down towards the Hopi tribes of the Southwest and their concept of Kachina, or spirit beings, that can personify anything from an ancestor to a star. The spirits did come from the underworld, but they weren't super evil or anything. In fact, Kachina dolls were often given to kids as a study aid for their religious teachings. They were hung on walls or rafters so that children could learn all the names and appearances of their various spirits, which was helpful since there were more than 200 different ones. That's more than there were Pokemon in Gen 1. Zatu and its pre-evolution Natu bear a striking resemblance to bird Kachina dolls like the Eagle Dancer Kachina, and their color schemes borrow heavily from common Southwest palettes. Was that it? Did we finally cover it all? Not even close, dude. The other thing about Zatu is that supposedly all it does is stand in one spot and stare into the sun all day. According to the Pokedex, this enables it to simultaneously view the past and the future, which leaves it in quiet meditation, but also partially paralyzed with fear. Right, and check this out. In Silver and Fire Red, its entries actually reference real world South America, where apparently it is said that its right eye sees the future and its left eye views the past. You know what this means, right? Time to continue the journey down to Guatemala and the ancient Mayans. Here, not only do we find another Zatu lookalike in the resplendent Quetzal, which we already kind of covered in the Rayquaza episode, but we also find an ancient practice known as sun gazing, which was performed not only by the Mayans, but also the Aztecs, Egyptians, and certain Eastern Asian peoples. Sun gazing is basically exactly what it sounds like, staring directly at the sun for long periods of time. The idea was to harness the power of the sun for spiritual or medicinal purposes. It was supposed to heal ailments, improve night vision, and even help you see meditative visions. See, not too big of a jump to a psychic type Pokemon who stares at the sun and sees the future, right? Just don't do it yourself or the ultraviolet waves can cause cataracts in your eyes and damage your retinas. Unless you're a Zatu, that is, then you can stare all you want. See? What do you think? Pretty cool, right? Definitely. And now that we know where it comes from, it's time to learn what Zatu can do. Let's do it, dude. Right. Gen 6 Zatu battle strats start right now. Pokemon. As usual with some of these less popular guys, Zatu's stats leave something to be desired. However, it also has access to Magic Bounce, one of the most mind games -y abilities in the game, so what the heck, let's see if we can do something cool with it. Start with a Timid Wand and Super Train it in HP and Defense. 
Magic Bounce means that any status moves or entry hazards used against Zatu will reflect back to the user, so plan on switching Zatu in and out throughout the match whenever you can predict one in order to gain momentum. Use Roost to get back any health that you lose, and give it a rocky helmet to help discourage any attacks. Psychic is a great stab move when the opportunity is there, and Heat Wave can be a devastating coverage move when your opponent doesn't see it coming. But also make sure to run U-Turn on his set to really give yourself the advantage while also keeping Zatu nice and healthy. Of course, that's not the only way to train a Zatu, so as always, here are a few random thoughts. Thunder Wave is another option for this set simply because nobody likes getting paralyzed, especially right after having their Stealth Rock reflected back. Use this if Sabotage is your goal. Then again, some think Zatu is too weak to pose a threat and might even try to set up on it. Discourage this with a well-placed haze and you'll be surprised how mad some people can get. And finally, it might be worth considering the Colber Berry in place of the Rocky Helmet. Like I said, Zatu's stats aren't super great and sometimes that extra protection from that one dark type move you didn't expect can mean the difference between a win and a loss. And that's it, Zatu. So were you staring straight into the sun when I found you just now? Maybe. Oh yeah? What did you see? Nothing very clear, but if you watch closely, something seems to be coming real soon. Something big. Okay. Anyway, click here for more videos about psychic types and here for this week's episode of the Hour Long Dex Podcast. It's awesome. I'm What Are You Doing, Alex? And I'm Polka Kells. Tune in next week for another divergent episode of The, the Dex. Dex.